Hey, Walt here from StowGearReview.com with another video cigar review. This time around we are doing a first impressions review or a first impressions take on uh, the Azul Vintage 2008 from Steve Sidron. At least I hope it's from Steve Sidron because his name's on the side of it. But these cigars are being uh, distributed or at least represented by Gary from uh, House of Emilio. And that's it's a pretty interesting thing that's going on. It's it's still relatively new in that it's only a couple years old, but House of Emilio is sort of banded together and is doing a tremendous job of pushing uh, all of the boutique brands forward. So they, they seem to be getting a massive presence in the industry uh, because of what Gary's done in, in pulling everyone together under one umbrella, uh, under you know that the House of Emilio umbrella. And they seem to be doing really well in getting boutique cigars into a, into manufacturers or retailers' hands. Because, uh, you know, at one point in time, you could walk into your local cigar, cigar shop who had been in business for 20, 25 years and ask him for something boutique. And he would give you that, that dumb stare, like, what are you talking about? And uh, with, with uh, distributors or reps, much like House of Emilio, they're getting, uh, they're getting the, the word out about all of these new boutique brands. And uh, I think that's really cool. So... As I said, this is my first time smoking the Azul. This one came courtesy of Jerry. He sent me a goodie bag a little while back. And I've been picking through it, smoking all of the stuff that I had already had. I think I did a couple of short videos on some of the stuff that I hadn't had. And finally, we're coming down the home stretch. There's uh, maybe a couple of cigars left in that package. And uh, I thought the Azul looked pretty interesting, so I wanted to, to light it up and smoke it. The name, though, gets me. It, it sounds like there should be a Ghostbusters tie-in with uh, with the name Azul. But uh, so far we're off to a pretty good start. Um, the draw is a little bit stiff, uh, but it's it's producing good solid smoke. It's coating the palate well. Uh, it seems to be burning pretty well, which is always a good sign, especially early on. It's got uh, a lot of bright flavors. It's uh, got some spiciness, some pepperiness. Uh, they're amplified through the retrohale. Uh, a little bit of uh, almost like a sweet and salty mixture on the tongue. And, you know, it, it's got some oomph behind it. It's got a little bit of power. So, so far we're off to a good start. I'm going to smoke uh, quite a bit more of my cigar. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit about how the cigar is progressing, and we'll kind of go from there. The most fun part of doing these videos lately is uh, kind of going back to the old, the way Stogie Review used to do things, or the way I used to do things in my video reviews. And we've gone back to videos where I'm doing mostly a cigar review, but also a podcast of my life mixed in. And uh, I want to keep going with that. It's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. Uh, people in the comments seem to be enjoying it. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm getting a fair amount of praise, so that's. That's uh, awesome motivation to keep going. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, my weekend. It's, it's been uh, a really long weekend at that. So on Saturday, I got woken up at about 3.30 a.m. And I talked about that in the last video I did, the the, uh, the E.P. Carrillo uh, Cardinal Maduro. And I didn't even know if I wanted to post that. Uh, you know, I, I package up the, the video. I got it all taken care of and prepped it for upload, and then um, I started getting second thoughts, like, do I, do I really want people to see me with my hair sticking up, me half awake, just kind of rolling down here out of bed, and uh, and getting that, just d doing a review for the hell of it, or, you know, do I want to pack that away as, uh, you know, some sort of lost tape that's that'll wind up, you know, on a hard drive somewhere, but uh, I decided to publish it anyway, so uh, if you're interested in hearing that whole story, you can check out the EPC... Cardinal Maduro review, where I talk about why I was up so early. But uh, from there, my wife and I had to run out to pick up uh, a sofa for the new house. And, uh, you know, we had to do some running around. We had to drop my daughter off at my in-law's house, or my mother-in-law's, and then meet my father-in-law at work <clears throat> so we could borrow his pickup truck. And then we had to go pick it up, and then we had to take the, the couch back to my in-law's so that we could drop it off. <clears throat> I had to drive back, return the truck, then uh, we were looking at the, the house a little bit, walking around the outside, just kind of seeing how things were going with uh, the uh, the current homeowner is just doing some last minute cleanup, you know, and and uh, it, the house is looking pretty good, uh, and the outside is looking pretty good too. 
So, uh, you know, we went, just did a quick walk around the house, and then from there we went back to my in-laws so I could drop my wife off. And then I raced out to the archery club where I was running about 45, <laughs> 45 minutes late. Uh, I'm shooting a field league, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, field archery is it was something I used to do as a kid. And when I got back into archery, or at least when I was a kid, the transition was moving away from field archery, which is basically paper targets hung up on, on bales of various sorts. You know, sometimes they're hay, sometimes they're excelsior. And, uh, and the whole objective was to shoot... A, a, a variety of arrows, I think it was a hundred and some, hundred and twelve maybe, arrows in a given round, and uh, it was a lot of fun. You shot anywhere from like 20 feet all the way out to 60 or 80 yards, and I, I used to love that stuff as a kid, and as as I got in, as I got to the point where I was getting older and my family was prepping to move, and get and I was getting out of archery, which eventually turned into not shooting anymore because because we moved. But uh, the transition was going away from the, the paper targets, the field archery, and into the f 3D stuff, which is basically big foam animals, uh, you know, animal replicas, deer, bear, coyote, you know, whatever. And uh, you, you, you basically walk through a course and you shoot one arrow at every animal, and it's a, it's a drastic transition tra or difference from what I was accustomed to as a kid. But that's kind of the big game now. So I started getting into uh, 3D archery when I started shooting again maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. And um, the, the, the archery club that I recently joined is doing this field league and it's been just, uh, it's, it's been memories of my youth. It's, it's fantastic. Um, you know, I get out and I shoot, I have a great time in the woods. It's, it's been fantastic. So uh, I wound up late for that. It took us about two hours to shoot the, the field league, which is 14 targets four hours per target, anywhere from, I don't know, 20 feet, 18 feet, something like that, out to 80 yards, and it was just a lot of fun, uphill, downhill, real rugged course, so, uh, you know, you're working, and it's, 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 it's a tough, it's a tough course, but it's a lot of fun. So uh, after that, my wife went to a baby shower, and I had some time to kill, so I stopped down at Sir Stogie's in Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania, and uh, I hadn't been in the shop in years. Uh, I was there shortly after they opened to check it out, and uh, they've come a really long way in the past couple of years. I think they're, they're going to be hitting their five-year anniversary on uh, around Thanksgiving of this year. And uh, the, the shop has grown, the, the customer base has grown, they're doing really, really well. Um, you know, they started out with one walk-in humidor, which was maybe maybe 12 by 12, and they packed it pretty full. Uh, they outgrew it, so they put it in a second walk-in, which was about 12 by 12. Now that is starting to fill. They moved all of their... Uh, initially, when the second humidor was put in, it was mostly for pre-packaged stuff and, uh, and infused cigars and flavored cigars and things like that. And eventually it started filling up and they pulled all of the infused and flavored stuff out and put them in their own display cabinets and uh, they're filling up. They put a private lounge in that seems to be doing really well. Um, Fifty some members already and that's, that's fantastic. The, 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 the cigar shop that I was going to a little while back, just stopping in from time to time, which I, I don't like, I, even, I don't even like visiting now, they were struggling to keep two members so they're, it's just a night and day difference. So uh, I hung out there for a couple of hours. I picked up some uh, a handful of cigars. I spent a lot of money on a very few cigars. I know at one point in time we were really pushing the whole uh, you know buy local if you can thing, but my budget just does not allow to spend 37 and change on five cigars. It just doesn't. It just it doesn't work. It doesn't stretch far enough. So I think going forward, with me being really close to the cigar shop. When I go there, it's probably going to be to buy one cigar. I'm probably going to be miking it and buying the biggest thing they have so that I can smoke for the longest period of time and get maximum value out of my dollar in terms of time spent at the at the cigar shop. I'll, I'm, I'm even considering maybe uh, joining the, the private uh, lounge because it kind of gives you the freedom of smoking whatever you want. And uh, I'll be able to, to guilt-free bring stuff in and smoke it while still picking up one cigar while I'm there, of course. Um, after that, I picked my wife up at my in-laws, went back home. Um, 
The following day was Father's Day. I got up bright and early again. Um, I, I wound up making a trip up to Cigars International looking for a pipe for my father-in-law, which I initially ordered online and then found out later on that it was back ordered. So uh, my father-in-law expressed an interest in wanting to, to try a pipe. And I was having some trouble tracking him down online, uh, especially getting them getting it here on time. I kind of uh, dropped the ball in, in ordering it in advance because we didn't find out until, I don't know, sometime last week that uh, he wanted a pipe for Father's Day, so I had to do some running around. Um, I was able to find a pipe at Cigars International. I picked him up, uh, I think it was uh, Graco, I believe. Nice looking pipe, expensive, or fairly expensive, more expensive than I was expecting. And uh, from there, uh, run, you know, the usual Father's Day stuff, running around with my daughter, uh, running to see my father, my, my father-in-law, and uh, I had a, a Drew Estate T52 Liga Pravada that I picked up at Cigars International. Uh, I don't typically like spending $15 on a stick, but with it being Father's Day, I thought I would, uh, I would uh, treat myself to a very expensive cigar. And uh, that was a lot of fun. So that leaves us to here. It's the dreaded Monday again. I just finished uh, a full work day, and now I'm enjoying an Azul. So I'm going to relight this cigar because I'm sure I talk too much. And uh, we'll come back, we'll talk about the cigar. Well, I'm plugging along on my Azul Vintage 2008 from, I believe, Epicurean Cigars, uh, Steve Sidron. And the cigar's going really well. It's, it's remarkable how balanced it is. It, I mean, it's just got the perfect blend of, of power and flavor. And it's kind of medium on both with, a, with like a spicy, peppery back end that kind of lingers on the palate a little bit. And it, it just does a, a really good job of, of being a good, solid, medium-bodied cigar with plenty of flavor to go with. Uh, the the most dominant, or most, I shouldn't say the most dominant, but the most interesting flavor that I'm getting now is cedar. And it's, it's I can taste it, and I can also smell it coming off the cigar with the resting smoke. And um, I'm 99% sure that it's from the, the cedar wrap that was on the cigar, that, that it was packaged with. And, uh, you know, sometimes they can sometimes they can make cigars kind of funky. They give it that little bit of a cedar taste, and it just doesn't quite go over well. But in this case, I really think it accents the flavor profile really well. It's, it's a nice little subtle, just... I don't know, a dash of cedar that just brings it all together, makes it work, and uh, it's just turning out to be a really good cigar. Aside from the cedar, you get a little bit of pepper that kind of lingers on the palate, you get a little bit of spiciness through the sinus, um, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of saltiness. It's almost got like a little bit of a, like a raisin sort of taste that, that that seems different from the the sweetness. So you know, so you get this sort of raisiny kind of flavor, and then you get a little bit of residual sweetness in the palate. So it's got a lot of different things going on. It makes for a really complex smoke. Uh, as I said, the body's medium. The you know the the flavor intensity is is good. It's medium, medium to full. Uh, it's got a soft finish. It, it's not aggressive on the palate. This is one of those cigars where uh, you could smoke it, and after you were finished, you could probably pick up another one, and you, you wouldn't feel weary or worn down. You know, this is something that you could smoke multiples of. Not that a lot of people like smoking multiples, but uh, you certainly could if you wanted to, and you wouldn't feel bat beaten and battered on the palate. The construction is good. The, the draw is, a, is still a little bit of, a little stiff, but even with that stiffness, you're still getting lots of smoke, and it coats the palate well. And again, it's not aggressive, so it's, it's a very pleasant smoking cigar. Uh, I did have to touch it up once, that right before I turned the camera off last time. I cleaned off all the ash to retoast it and lit, and it's been going strong ever since. Uh, the ash holds on pretty well. I've got a couple of solid chunks in the ashtray. No accidental drops on my lap. Uh, the, th the burn line has been thin and even. Good quality of smoke uh, coming off the draw. Uh, the resting smoke is fairly light. It's nice and aromatic. You know, just, uh, it, it's it's really an impressive cigar. I don't know that this is something that I would smoke a lot of. Um, even though I'm finding it really impressive, 
it's 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 wowing me with its character, but I don't know that it's enough to keep me coming back. I mean, I, I really can appreciate the cigar and everything that it is, but I don't know if it's really won me over. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited about how well it's smoking, and it's really impressing me, but, you know, trying to envision this down the line, I don't know that this is something that would drive me out to pick up another one, and another one, and another one. Uh, it is something that I would appreciate, picking up from time to time, but I don't know that this is something I'm going to keep reaching for. Um, it's got interesting flavors, it's, it's, it's complex, it's just a really solid cigar, but there's just something, I, I, I didn't, and I don't know what it is, I can't quite put my finger on it. Uh, while I like it, and I'm, I'm really excited about it, 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 I don't feel compelled to seek out more. And uh, even, even with that said, it, it's an impressive cigar. I think I've said everything that I need to say about the cigar. However, I don't want to cut it short. I know the video is getting kind of long, but as I said a couple of reviews back, I don't really care about length anymore. That's that's Jerry's cue. But uh, I, I don't really... I, I don't care how long these videos run. The, it is what it is. And uh, and that's kind of the way I'm going with these videos from now on. Uh, just kind of getting back to the way we were, we used to be and what got us... Uh, so big in the, in the cigar industry. So, just total disregard for video length. They they are what they are. If you don't like it, you can always turn the video off. But uh, I'll probably come back one more time. Uh, we'll we'll wrap up the cigar probably briefly. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens when the band comes off with the with the draw being a little stiff. I'm curious to see if the cigar is going to get warm, and if it if it turns out that it's getting warm, it, it does it turn acrid? You know, just how far down can I smoke this cigar before it becomes unpleasant? And uh, I think it's worth coming back one more time just for that. And maybe I'll babble on some more and tell you about something else just to draw this video out even longer. But uh, sit tight, and I will be right back. Well, we're coming down the home stretch on my Azul Vintage 2008, and I've got to say it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's performing really well. I mean, I've had so many boutique cigars that that are modeled after the, uh, you know, the blender that's making it, and they they sort of hammer you over the head with one thing. You know, it's you get their very favorite aspect of the cigar, and they kind of beat you over the head with it. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's, that's a really good way to make a cigar, and sometimes it's, it's not so much. But in this case, you know, it's, it's just a really soft blend of, blend of flavors, it's very balanced, and it just it, it makes for a really good cigar. Uh, I was a little concerned that it might start getting warm after I popped the band off, because there is a little bit of a stiffness to the draw. While it's, it's a little warm on my fingers, it's not it's not getting gnarly uh, you know it's, it's not getting that acrid taste that sometimes you get when cigars begin to warm up now granted I have uh, slowed down a little bit to, to keep the the warmness in check or the heat in check but uh, I, I've got to say I'm really impressed this is uh, definitely something I enjoy this is something that I would uh, enjoy smoking later on down the line but uh, I do kind of feel a little douchey, you know. I'm, I'm really excited about the cigar, and I'm telling you, you should go out and, and pick up the cigar and smoke it and tell me what you think. But if you were to turn around and say, well, w w is it worth your money? Would you go out and buy it? Eh, I, I don't know. You know, it's it's a very good cigar. It's exciting, but it it's just, it's it's missing just that wow factor that, that makes me want to pull out my wallet and plop down my money. Um... It's definitely something that I would never turn down if offered one, but uh, I don't know that it's compelling enough to make me want to go out and buy it personally. Um, it's it's definitely a solid cigar, and you should, as I said, you should go out and try it. But uh, I, but I, I don't know if this is something that I would that I would seek out later on down the line. Um, so uh, that's going to bring the the Azul Vintage 2008 to a close. Uh, I'd love to get your feedback on it. If you've tried the cigar, what do you think? Uh, head down in the comment section below and uh, share your thoughts. So, until next time, take it easy, happy smoking, and I will catch you next time.